It's finally 2022, which means we have new products to discuss in this episode of The Swing Report. It's the TaylorMade Stealth Drivers. Time to split some shots. We'll break down all the TrackMan data and tell you everything you need to know. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf, and today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. It's a very exciting day, Thomas. New TaylorMade drivers, the Stealth models for 2022. Uh, we've got them all right here, three models, and I mean, these are always the best videos that we do. It's that we're all excited about the new products and the new technology to discuss, and all golfers everywhere are excited, not just us. So, uh, Thomas, we've got them all in front. We've got the stock shafts, we've got all the heads. What initial impression you're looking at them what do you see? Well, it's like Christmas today. Yeah. So I'm always excited. And uh, we've seen likes of like Tiger Woods already playing it mm -hmm. recently here on uh, when he was when he was playing the Father Son event. I am just excited just to, to test. It looks so different. Mm -hmm. yeah. not, not something I'm used to seeing here from from TaylorMade. I mean, we've got this nice, pure black crown and you've yep. got this red face. Mm -hmm. uh, I've I'm excited to see what kind of ball speed we're going to see because I'm expecting this to be a great hit in 2022. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a lot different, like you said. Uh, the club face material is the big piece, I think, that we'll get into. But when I see this, I look at that club head, like you mentioned, the crown. There's no more of the kind of uh, additional colors, right? Like in the past several models of TaylorMade drivers, you've had, you know, with the M family, there was some red with the M5, M6. There was even kind of some yellow or green with the M1, M2 series. And then, you know, there was the white and kind of blue with the sim. And so now we kind of go away from that, at least from the crown aspect. It's all black on this crown. There is nothing else on there besides that, that black look. And then, of course, you see the club face and you see the red. So <laughs> there is, it's, a, it's a different look at a dress. Uh, so I'm excited. And there, again, three, three club heads, that's nothing new for TaylorMade. So they're addressing every golfer out there, really, with these three models here. Yeah, you talk about three models. Initially picking up these models here, you know, they look different. If you pick them up from the bottom mm -hmm. side, you can see that the HD model is, you can definitely see there's a little bit more of a weight towards the heel side. Yeah. It's still HD, high draw. We, we, a lot of golfers do still slice the ball. Oh, yeah. um, and we're looking here at the, the Stealth model here. You can see it seems like it's a very neutral weighted club. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the sliding weight, but all the, right. I know all the weight's been pushed back to really, but being able to save weight with the club face, yeah changed and design and still be able to push it back to increase the MOI. And you're holding this this Stealth Plus model mm -hmm. and it's got the sliding weight back, which I know a lot of club fitters, a lot of players like the idea of to be able to manipulate this center of gravity around. Right, so they actually took that out in the Sim 2 series and they brought it back now. It's a 10 gram weight. Again, you can, as uh, you know, the past models indicated, you could have a neutral setting, a fade setting or a draw setting. But um, I think, you know, we need to get into this club face. So, this club face is a 60, what they call it, 60X carbon twist face. So what's new is that the club face is made of carbon. And there's actually 60 layers of it kind of all uh, right there behind the initial club face or 60 layers of carbon. And they also incorporated their twist face, which has been in the driver series from TaylorMade since I believe 2018 with the M3 and M4. So it's a totally different feel. It kind of feels a little bit funky and then, you know, most drivers out there are that titanium kind of is kind of the standard material for a club face. This is carbon. It's totally different. So yeah. that's why we're so intrigued by this series here. Yeah, and with carbon, it's it's weight saving. So it's forty four percent lighter than the original mm -hmm. titanium face. I talked about moving that center of gravity back. So especially with the with the stealth model and the stealth HD, they're able to push that weight as far back as they can mm -hmm. and redistribute that weight around. Now they're also able to have bring the sliding weight back mm -hmm. and have that weight, that center of gravity a little bit pushed forward with the plus model there too. And of course, they're also able to bring back the asymmetric inertia generator. So this was, I think, the M6 model is when this was initially kind of introduced and they've evolved it a little bit. It was very uh, prominent in the Sim series. And now on the Stealth, it's kind of that, that shape you see a little bit kind of of that. Um, basically, it's, it's, it's all about aerodynamics. And so they're trying to increase your swing speed as you come down towards the ball. And it's not quite, you know, perfectly in line with the club head. It's right, not perfectly straight back but it's designed to make sure when you swing down on that angle, your, your club face is going towards the ball, that you're gaining swing speed throughout aerodynamics. So you'll see that here. It's actually adjusted a little bit in that uh, HD model for more of that, that draw bias there too. So there's a lot of technology here involved. And then of course, we gotta go through these, these shaft options too, which there's a couple of new names, I think, but also a lot of familiar models and names that are involved here. So um, going from kind of, maybe we'll go from the, the lightest, maybe the um, uh, most, 
flexible to the kind of stiffest here. Yep. So we've got the Fujikura Air Speeder, um, which is going to be available in kind of your light flexes and your regular flex. Um, we've also got the Eldilla Ascent, another one kind of in that, that light to regular flex. Uh, and then also, this is a new one, I think, a uh, relatively new one, Fujikura Ventus Red. Well, the Fujikura Ventus Red was available in previous models. It's just like a, looks like it's just got a different, uh, different paint, look to it. Different look to it there, too. Okay, because kind of, the last one was actually red, the, the yep, shaft in general. Purely red. And this has kind of got that red logo on it. Yep. Um, we've got the Project X Hazardous Smoke RDX Red. That's, that's a new one. That's a new one. Yep. Uh, which also, I, mean, I believe that one is also available in extra stiff, as is the Mitsubishi Chemical Kyli. So, some new names here. Uh, today, we'll be testing with the Kyli in a 60 gram stiff flex. Uh, well, by we, I mean Thomas will be testing. Uh, and so, that's a lot of, again, a lot of information thrown at you here. We'll kind of repeat some of that stuff as we do the testing, but at the end of the day, we're just excited to watch Hits and Bombs, Thomas. Yeah, bombs. Let's, let's see how far these drives go. All right, so Thomas, you're getting a first look here. At, is that the, that's the HD model. Uh, so what do you see when you first look at that one? Yeah, so I'm looking down at, this is a 10 and a half degree head. Uh, what I'm looking at, I find really interesting is I'm used to seeing like an HD or a draw bias head, like it sits a little bit closed. Well, it really doesn't. And I wanted to bring that up because we have a couple, the other two cloud heads we've got are nine degree heads. So I'm actually gonna adjust this so we can also okay. test this at nine yeah. compared to the others. But I wanted to bring that up before I adjusted it because we know that if I do adjust it, that's actually gonna open the face up a little bit. Yeah. But at 10 and a half, looking down at it, it looks, yeah, it looks mm -hmm. very, very neutral. Yeah, and, and one of the things that TaylorMade, you know, has, has told us is, you know, over the past when there's been a draw bias driver, uh, maybe compared to, you know, the other high MOI driver in the series per se, what manufacturers most of the time have been doing is taking out some MOI to create that draw bias. So in a way, you're actually losing some forgiveness by having the draw bias compared to you know, for example, like in the past, the D-Type versus kind of this, the standard Max driver yep. from TaylorMade. You know, the Max driver would be more forgiving, um, even though you might have more draw bias with the D-Type. You know, now, there's, with the way that they designed that kind of inertia generator in the back, they've just simply moved that towards the heel. And they're saying it's also the most forgiving of the three models, in addition to having the most draw bias. So, something to note there. Um, and then, like you mentioned, the Stealth and the Stealth HD are both offered at 9, 10 and a half, and 12 degrees aloft. And then the plus is offered at 8, 9, and 10 and a half. So okay. that plus is you're gonna kind of find out here, you know, obviously you know, it's built for those kind of faster swinging kind of in players that maybe need lower spin. Yep. So initial testing today, everything's gonna be set at 9. 9 degrees. Yep. That was uh, really right. quiet off the face. Yeah, I'm not, you yeah. know, and again, we're in an, an environment here where, you know, you're got, you're, it's going to be loud. You're in a, a fitting bay, but it doesn't seem like there was a lot of feedback right away there. Right, it just it felt pretty soft off the face. It was definitely mm -hmm. quiet. It wasn't super loud, and yeah, it, it felt pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That was a great start there, too. It is. Wow. wow, look at that ball flight and the spin staying low. It's crazy. Interesting. So here's a question for you. You have, so that's the, that's the HD. Where do you see, you know, and what should we be looking for to kind of create sort of that, that draw bias? Is it kind of with maybe the face angle being totally closed or is it maybe the way you swing creating more of that, that path or what are, you, what are you looking for here? Well, I mean, on that one there, my face to path was 0.0. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's got to got to be have a little bit to do with the with the weight distributed yeah. on the club head. Is that just kind of helping it turn over as you swing down? Right, helping it turn over. And even though I talked about how it looks like it's so neutral at, at address, I'm sure there's some they've got some hidden yeah. workability that could, to I get mean, that face a little bit closer. And like I've said before, that something manufacturers do look at a ton is the way it looks at address because there is. You know, a, a draw bias head, there's ways to create that draw bias. And we've seen how, at, you know, at, at address can sit closed or what have you. And hiding that is something that I think is maybe that next step. And, and you know, having a draw bias club that doesn't look like it's completely turned over when you're yeah. just sitting the club down. And maybe they've accomplished that here. Yeah, it's a, it's a good looking club. It's a lot of ball speed there. 
There you go. Wow. Yeah, it's very easy to draw, that's mm -hmm. for sure. I am noticing some, some height here too. Now, it's a lot know, of this, height. Is, this is going to be, I would imagine, the highest kind of launching and highest spinning club head of yeah, the three. Yeah, you, you, you would expect that. Now, a lot of it's going to come down to where you hit on the face as yeah. well. It's oh, going yeah. to influence it. Um, there's no secret, my attack angle is very high yes, up on the bowl. So that's why we're seeing that height. And mm -hmm. that's why we're seeing that spin rate staying down and that height, yeah. even with a higher spinning club head. Mm -hmm. so I want to lift the face open on. Yeah. Okay. So, do you think bad. that's, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of waiting for your feedback because I know you're a perfectionist, but I feel like that still worked out really well for having the face open you know, two and a half degrees almost. Right, that doesn't feel very good, but I'm shocked to see how that spin rate okay. still, I mean, that thing still took, carried 300 yards. <laughs> it did, yeah. You carried yeah. 300 yards and you're probably offline, I don't know, 20 yards, if that. Yeah, that one, I, yeah, that one is a bad swing. I know when my bad swing, so I need the face open, it's gonna go a little bit further right than that. Yeah. And it's kinda hung in there. So do you think maybe having the draw bias club head, you know, resisted that, that right, shot a little bit there? Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. If, it, if it wasn't a draw bias club, that probably would have made it to that bunker on the right. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Good start. That's a really, really good start. Yeah. Um, I'm going to just bring this up here. So we've got five swings. You can see how kind of consistent it is. Oh, you can see clearly the one that left the face open on yep. was, was, was way right. Yeah. And so... You know, we can expand these numbers here. We'll just take a look at the averages and everything here. But we've got five swings, and we've got spin right around 1937. Carry is 300 yards, and the total of 322. Uh, Thomas, you're, you're making some good swings at the ball today. Yeah, I mean, this is a good start with the HD model. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see what the other models do. Yeah, so we've got, next is probably just the, the, the standard stealth model, where you kind of remove some of that draw bias. But again, a higher MOI club. I, it sh I would imagine it compares pretty similarly here, but I guess we'll see. So the stealth is put together. Is there anything that is different now that you're going away from the kind of the, the HD or draw bias? I know you had that one adjusted uh, down to nine degrees, but is there anything different at address? Yeah, I mean, it looks a little bit more compact. Okay. So compact from, from heel to toe, maybe a little taller face overall, but okay. yeah, it's it's still very, very clean looking. I'm loving okay. this black look. Looking yeah, and down that all it. black to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a miss hit. Pretty good miss hit, though. A miss hit. Miss hit. Carries almost 300 yards. Finishes at 320.6. Well, I know that was a miss hit based on the smash factor number Correct. there. No, I, I, yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, your smash is usually well above 145. Yeah. You know, you're usually really close to, if not hitting, one five zero. So, did that one feel? I mean, how, how's the feedback on that? Give me the, the feel, because like, you know, I, I think people are going to be curious about the feel based on the new face material. So, especially when you miss the center of the face. I'm still shocked with how soft it feels. Yeah. It's. I'm. I'm used to hearing a, a very loud bang when I hit driver. Yeah. And it's just off the face. It's just muted and soft yeah. and. And goes. Yeah, which, it's, yeah. it's almost like, you know, how much different a forged iron feels and sounds compared to a cast one. It, there's a little bit of that kind of uh, angle here with yeah. the, the carbon face where it's just kind of soft and muted, but there's still that enough feedback and feel behind it. Yeah, yeah, it, it feels good. Wow. Interesting there. Wow. Boom. That is a very, very straight ball flight there. Oh, those are good numbers there. This is some, some of the best initial testing, I think, in terms of, terms of numbers. Now, I know your club speed, you're swinging it pretty good right now. And I know you started some training a little bit more, but these are some good distance numbers here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not used to seeing that club speed all of a sudden so, so fast. And yeah. Might be a little bit to do with the it could design be. of the club there yeah. as well. And, like I said, some of the some mm -hmm. work I've been doing a little bit recently here in the gym. I just can't get over how soft it feels off the face. Yeah? 
So here's a question on that one. How did that, did that one feel impact wise similar to the other ones? Yeah? Yeah. It just, it just felt like that was a pretty smooth swing. Mm -hmm. And it maybe go off of that one was hard. It was a little bit less on the club speed. Because I, I, I was curious just because it seemed like the spin went up a little bit. Yeah. Um, I know I think we got one more to hit yet, but okay. Because I was. One more to hit. I was going to see on that spin, it looked like, yeah, just a little bit higher. Oh, well, it's, we still got, you know, on average right around 2,000. But. Yep. Um, all right, let's hit one more here. The see if I can keep that stealth. dispersion pattern That's nice and tight. That's pretty darn good. I didn't even mention that. I didn't want to jinx you. I didn't, well, I didn't think I hit that one as well, but pretty good. Just yeah. a little bit low on the face, maybe? That was low on the face. Okay. Yeah, it kind of took off a little bit lower on the, and it hit lower on the screen, I noticed, and then I see that spin kind of jumped a little bit. But, see, so here's our dispersion after those two, the Stealth and the Stealth HD, and then we can uh, bring up, maximize the numbers here. So that one strike kind of, you know, bumped that average spin up with the Stealth. Yep. Um, the HD is, I guess, a, a leader right now. Again, I think that well, one. You could we take probably out that take one hit. that one outlier per club. That yeah. one that's if way we right take out, with the HD. You know, this last one here is the one we'll take out. And then out. if we take a look at the one that they have to face wide open on, yep, that one there. That's probably we the kind of go between best the two four of, of each one. Yep. And then from there we have, you know, these numbers here. We can same uh, club speed. Them. Yeah, same yeah. club speed, ball speed, pretty similar, and just a little, maybe a more slightly more efficient strike with the HD. Spin is pretty similar, actually. I mean, a 200 RPM difference that's noteworthy for sure. Right. Uh, again, I think potentially part of the draw bias. I mean, generally a draw is going to spin less. So yes. That could be part of yep. part of that. Uh, but I mean, 300 yards carry with both essentially. So I mean, it's clearly a very efficient club here and you're hitting it plenty high in the air. Uh, so now we can kind of go and with what should be the lowest launching and lowest spinning, um, we have the Stealth Plus. We'll put it just the weight in the middle for now and we'll see you know, what happens there. The center of gravity should be a little bit more forward with this one. All right. That was smoked. I think that's the highest ball speed of the day. Wow. It's a little lower bull flight there. Yeah. It certainly took off a little bit lower than the other ones have. And the ball speed's also a tad higher, I think. Yeah, that's the highest ball speed we've mm -hmm. seen. We might crack one, 170 with this driver. Well, that's two swings in, and you've hit eclipsed 169 ball speed with both of them. Yeah, a little lower mm -hmm. trajectory there, for sure. Left face a little open on that mm -hmm. one. Seeing that the oh wow oh wow. All right, another high ball speed there. That is surprising. So the high ball speed is nothing new, but yeah. to see that spin stay down sub two thousand and then carry still, I think that's the farthest carry so far. Well, his face angle was three degrees open and that spin was still under two thousand. That's yeah. that's really good stuff. Wow. You might hit one seventy here. Yeah, yeah it's a little just because you turn it over a little bit. Yeah, it does feel like it's a little harder to control. I'm not gonna lie, but it definitely sure. is, is hotter off the face. Okay. Yeah. Which I think that's generally kind of a. Um, you got the weight forward. You know, you got that yeah. weight forward, so it's gonna take off a little bit lower. And in general, that's a tougher one to control than. Yep. You know, something that launches a little bit higher. I mean, the ball speed can be consistently pretty high there. Yeah, that's, wow, that's a really good last one. 332. That's 333 total there. Goodness gracious. Right. Let's see here. So, and like you said, okay, so we wanted to take out, uh, since we did with the other ones, we'll take out one. Probably the one the way shot, left. And I imagine it's going to be that one left. Yeah. But even, yeah. Which would be this one here. So we'll go with that. We'll collapse here. And here's our dispersion map. After we've hit, well, we got 12 shots up there, four with each club, and then we took out kind of one outlier per se with each. So dispersion wise, very good dispersion patterns here. Um, I think it almost kind of falls in line too with what we'd expect. You know, we got that HD on the left side here. We've got the stealth kind of right in the middle and probably the smallest uh, oval or dispersion up there. That's pretty straight, yeah. And then the plus seems to be the furthest on average up there. 
Uh, and then it's also, you know, the widest, I think, and you had mentioned maybe a little bit tougher to control. Yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at the, the numbers and see if we notice anything different there on ball speed. I mean, you can talk about that smash factor and mm -hmm. you see I'm getting a little higher ball speed there with, this, with the Stealth Plus for sure. Yeah. A little less spin than the Stealth. Um, and it's chasing out 328. Wow, well, that's, that's some serious that. distance. I also wanted to look at the launch angle here. So we see comfortably the lowest launch angle was the Stealth Plus, uh, you know, Again, all of these tested were at nine degrees loft. Uh, the, the HD head was actually at 10 and a half and adjusted down to, to nine. To nine. Yep. Uh, but you see the launch angle here. So 15.3 is pretty comfortably the lowest by, yeah. you know what, a degree and a half. In and it wasn't, my, it wasn't my lowest attack angle at all either. So no. And then, I mean, we go down the and it's going to see You can see height, what yeah. happened when I, mm -hmm. it was lower. It was a more optimal landing angle. At 39.9, I was almost in the optimal area. Yeah. Uh, I would have fun with this though. So let's lower the loft and okay. see just what kind of bombs I can hit with to finish like off. That. So I'm like going to move that. it from 9 to 7, just hitting it at lower. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if we can get a little more ball speed. See if we can possibly crack that, uh, that 310 right. carry distance, which has been a Jeez. long time for me. So when you move it down, this is also actually kind of opening the face a little bit? It is, yeah. So actually, believe it or not, it's hitting it at four degrees open. Okay. The, the so you're, I, I mean, you're probably going to be really getting around on this shot a little bit. So. Yeah, so I probably, now I have the confidence to go after it a little harder yeah. and not know well, I'm not going to hit a big snap. smoking snapbook. the drive, yeah. So yeah. let's see. I kind of want to see you get to that, uh, that 310 carry mark that you were, I'd, I'd mentioned earlier. Wow, that's a good start. <laughs> Close. Wow. Some serious ball speed still. And some low spin too. Yeah. And the ball's just not deviating from that flight either. Just very straight ball. Go oh, high. Get there. Yes. Oh, 310. So wow. that one I got a little high toe. As and you, you kind of knew the spin. with the high toe, you kind of knew it would be a little bit of a knuckleball. I knew it was going to be a high launch and low spin. See, I was concerned right away because I saw it kind of take off a little bit high and right. When, when I saw, you know, how it hit the screen, it was yeah. a little bit higher than, and right than your other ones. And so I was thinking, oh, that could be an open, open face high spinner. But you caught it on the right uh, part of the club face there. Yeah, that wasn't probably my best swing, but no, I got away with it. Well, for I, sure. I, you can get away with it with. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, clearly you can get away with it with a stealth driver. Yeah. High tall was always good. All right, let's, now you, you got to exceed 310, right? Because you got 310.0. So now you got to exceed 310. All right. You can do that. You didn't even hit that one perfect. <laughs> let's see if I got a couple of swings in me here left. Oh, yeah. Ball speed. That is some ball speed. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yikes. There was never a doubt. That's 337 <laughs> total, by the way. All right. I'm done. You're done? Yeah, I mean, I'm done. That's the three shots that you're asking for there. <laughs> that's, that's some pretty good numbers <laughs> here. Um, so I'm just going to bring this up once quick, and then we can kind of go to, into our final thoughts. But uh, I did want to showcase how these numbers compare. When you kind of really went after, you optimized the Stealth Plus 9 degree down to 7 degrees. Spin down to 1625 with a really good deviation number consistency, 86. Carry average 310.4, 334.4 total. Not bad. Not bad at all. Very good. Yep. Excellent. And actually, I believe it, I was actually hitting it a little bit higher, but that spin rate was lower. High right. launch, low spin. Interesting. And yeah, it's actually, I didn't even yeah. consider that. Because we were kind of thinking, you know, obviously with the Stealth Plus was the lowest launching head, but yep. then we even delofted that even more to the seven degrees. But you were just you know, you were swinging so, you know, more aggressively at it, and that attack angle was the highest so far, so I kind of had the launch and... Well, and I had that one that I got high toe, and that one's going to launch, it's going to fly a lot higher but overall. No, that's, that. that's fun to watch. I want to see the dispersion pattern. Let's just finish off here. Yeah, I'm pretty happy <laughs> with that. I'd be pretty happy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. And it, it's funny that I felt like that this right one was like, the way it took off, I just thought it'd be gone. <laughs> but we're talking about I'm looking at the scale on the bottom here. We're talking about 13 yards off center, which is very comfortably still so in the fairway. fairway. So yep. anyway, that's 
really good and good testing here and good performance from the stealth drivers so far. Thomas testing complete. The stealth drivers, uh, those were some very explosive numbers up there. Uh, I, I mean, I you know between the, the, the new look on the crown with the all black, um, kind of that a really a, a brand new face too. So there's a lot to be impressed with here, I think. I still can't believe how soft it felt off the face. Yeah. That was, that was probably my big, biggest takeaway today is it's soft, but boy, is it explosive. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I haven't hit 334 average with a, right. with a driver in a long, long time. Yeah. And, uh, that was fun yeah, to it's, watch. It's, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's actually amazing that you can deal off the club just a couple degrees, and then you kind of really went after it there too, and were able to really optimize. Now, if you were going for pure distance in your game, you know, you can see the results there. But we got to get into kind of who, who these club heads are for now. There's three models, right? So um, they're not all the same uh, benefits for everybody. So right. let's start with let's start with the Stealth Plus. This is the last one that you hit. It's got the, the adjustable weight on there. Um, after hitting that one, and then kind of what we know about it, center gravity, et cetera, uh, what type of player would best, you know, be interested in a Stealth Plus driver? Yeah, trying to bring the spin rate down. Mm -hmm. Probably the faster club speed golfers is what, it, what it's for. Um, having that weight forward is going to increase the ball speed a little bit and, and decrease the spin. Um, now, go, there's an eight degree option as well. Okay. So for those golfers that need to bring the spin down or bring the, the launch angle down, eight, nine degree options are very, very good options for the stealth. And then as you, as you saw there, when I open that face up or if I turn that loft down, um, mm -hmm. you can get some serious distance. Yeah, no, yeah. that thing was very explosive. Yeah. And, I was actually really impressed by how low the spin was, but also how consistent it was. And like you mentioned, there was a couple, you know, maybe you didn't quite hit the center every time, but the spin was still very consistent and consistently low. Uh, now the stealth model. So this is kind of your, uh, you know, in the middle of the pack, just basically aimed at giving forgiveness and high MOI. So what golfers, uh, what type of golf would be best for that one? I'd st I would still, uh, this is a wide range of golfers. This is the golfers yeah. who want to hit the ball pretty straight. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with, with the plus model, you've got that weight where you can still modify the center of right. gravity. This is going to be a little bit more forgiving and it's going to be designed to fly very, very straight. And we noticed yep. that the dispersion pattern was, right. was dead straight every single time mm -hmm. with, with that model. It felt good. It's just, yeah, it's, they're, they're both great options. Right. I just would expect the Stealth Plus to spin a little less the Stealth to spin just a little bit more and go mm -hmm. a little straighter. Yeah, and then lastly, the Stealth HD, the high draw model. Uh, I mean, not a secret there, probably aimed at players that struggle with that slice, which I know is a lot of people that come in here for fittings. Right, and then what I found interesting is I could hit it. Yeah. Like, I, I was expecting to have a hard time here, and I think it, it set up, it looked really clean for me to look at. I'm, some other drivers I've seen that are draw bias models, yeah. the faces looked a little bit closed, and when I t turn that thing down, you can also modify that as well to be, uh, it's, I think it's the highest MOI of the three this year. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking for a high MOI driver, it's got a tiny little draw bias to it. I think it's, it's a winner. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I mean, clearly there's some winners here. You got a ton of distance, a ton of ball speed, and the dispersion pattern was great on every option that we tested today as well. So golfers, you know where to go to get fit. Um, that's at Second Swing Golf in any of our store locations or uh, you can talk to one of our online fitting and support team members. But regardless, the TaylorMade Stealth drivers, uh, they look like they're going to be big time winners in 2022. So Thomas, thanks for joining uh, for another episode of the Swing Report. Again, a lot of excitement here about these drivers and they should be a big home run in 2022. TaylorMade is going to kill it with the Stealth line. <laughs>